According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average rose to a 34-year peak on Tuesday, buoyed by Wall Street's climb overnight to a fresh record high in the Bank of Japan's decision to keep ultra-easy policy settings intact. Japanese stocks received an additional tailwind from a rebound in Chinese equities amid hopes for additional stimulus measures from Beijing. According to Bloomberg, Malaysia is considering initiating legal proceedings against banks related to the troubled 1MDB state fund, as the government works to recoup assets lost from the multi-billion dollar scandal. A number of foreign banks, facilitated fund transfers linked to 1MDB without conducting proper processes, at that material time, Johari Abdul Ghani, who leads a task force to recover 1MDB assets, said in a statement. He did not identify the banks. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan kept its monetary policy settings steady and adjusted its economic projections while offering no clear hints as to the timing for a potential end of the negative interest rate, an outcome that nudged the yen weaker. The BOJ maintained its minus 0.1% short-term rate and kept yield curve control parameters intact at the end of a two-day meeting, according to its statement Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks rebounded as policymakers consider a package of measures to stabilize the slumping market, giving investors hope that the battered asset class may see short-term relief. The Hang Seng China Enterprises Index rose as much as 3.8% Tuesday as Bloomberg reported authorities are seeking to mobilize about 2 trillion yuan as part of a stabilization fund to buy shares onshore through the Hong Kong exchange link. The CSI 300 benchmark for mainland shares reversed losses to trade 0.6% higher. According to Reuters, China will expand planting of genetically modified soybeans and corn, a government official said, as the world's largest grains importer seeks to boost yields and improve food security. The country has for years moved cautiously on the deployment of GM crops but is steadily opening up to commercial cultivation. According to Bloomberg, Brazil's finance minister Fernando Haddad said the government is negotiating the form and content of the payroll tax bill and expects to work out an agreement with Congress sometime this week or next. Haddad said in an interview with TV Cultura late Monday that he is confident in the government's capacity to bring the fiscal deficit to zero this year as pledged. According to Bloomberg, Asian shares are poised for a mixed opening after Wall Street stocks saw small gains to close at fresh records as traders shrug off warnings the market has run too far, too fast. Futures show equities in Tokyo and Sydney will start trading relatively flat on Tuesday, while Hong Kong shares could rise about 1% after Chinese Premier Li Chang flagged more forceful measures to stabilize his country's slumping stock market. Such concerns are in contrast to the U.S., where investors are weighing strong economic signals and prospects for corporate profits. According to Bloomberg, the yen extended its earlier decline slightly after the Bank of Japan kept its monetary policy settings and forward guidance unchanged. The Japanese currency weakened as much as 0.3% to 148.55 against the dollar. Economists had unanimously forecast no change on Tuesday leaving the gatherings from March to July as the most likely timing for the BOJ to end negative interest rates. It traded at 148.34 at 12.19 p.m. in Tokyo. According to Reuters, South Korean retail investors have been caught out by an 11% fall in a key Hong Kong stock market index this month, as losses begin to materialize from about 15.4 trillion won of index-linked derivatives that mature this year. Of the 432.6 billion won of combined products sold by South Korea's major banks that have matured so far in January, there have been losses of 216.4 billion won as of Friday, according to the banks. According to Reuters, yields on super-long Japanese government bonds declined further on Tuesday after the Bank of Japan maintained ultra-easy monetary settings in a widely expected move. At a two-day meeting that concluded earlier in the day, the BOJ left unchanged its short-term rate target at minus 0.1% and that for the 10-year bond yield around 0%. According to Reuters, an Australian regulator is reviewing how pension funds value unlisted assets, ranging from private equity to office towers, as part of a long-term push to limit risks within the illiquid holdings popular in the 2.5 trillion Australian dollars sector.
The Australian Prudential Regulation Authority requested information from multiple pension funds in late 2023 as part of the review into unlisted asset valuation governance, according to a previously unreported November 2023 letter seen by Reuters. According to Reuters, Russia launched a missile strike on Kyiv and Ukraine's second-largest city of Kharkiv, Ukrainian officials said on Tuesday. Explosions in the city. Details later. Don't leave the shelters. Kyiv's mayor Vitaly Klitschko said on the Telegram messaging app. According to Bloomberg, Franklin Templeton is weighing expansion in Thailand, seeking to lure local investors of offshore products as the asset manager strengthens its Asia operations. The $1.5 trillion global investment manager is looking to distribute its fund products in the Southeast Asian country, though it does not have a specific timeline, Asia-Pacific head Tariq Ahmad said during an interview in Hong Kong. According to Bloomberg, India's stock market has overtaken Hong Kong's for the first time in another feat for the South Asian nation whose growth prospects and policy reforms have made it an investor darling. The combined value of shares listed on Indian exchanges reached $4.33 trillion as of Monday's close, versus $4.29 trillion for Hong Kong, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. That makes India the fourth biggest equity market globally. Its stock market capitalization crossed $4 trillion for the first time on December 5, with about half of that coming in the past four years. According to Reuters, Australian lithium producers may be set to track the nickel industry in project curtailments and delays this reporting season, analysts say, given slower than expected electric vehicle sales, but the jolt is expected to be less severe. Both sectors are contending with a sharp drop in raw materials prices because of the EV slowdown, but lithium is expected to snap back faster because its oversupply is seen as short term. According to Reuters, Riyadh has spent billions to try to turn itself into a hub for electric vehicles and overcome obstacles including a lack of infrastructure, talent and raw materials, as it seeks to catch up in the global race to reap the profits of the new industry. As part of a broader plan by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to wean the economy off oil and create jobs, the kingdom has invested at least $10 billion in US-based Lucid Motors, set up Seer, Saudi Arabia's own brand, and built an EV metals plant. According to Reuters, Bitcoin celebrated its 15th birthday this month by bursting onto Wall Street with an ebullient bang. Now the adolescent asset may have to grow up fast. Investors have embraced 11 US exchange-traded funds, tracking Bitcoin's spot price, that began trading on January 11 after receiving regulatory approval. After two trading days, they held a total of 644,860 Bitcoin worth more than $27 billion, according to data from analytics company Glassnode. According to Reuters, legacy automakers playing catch-up with EV leaders like Tesla are leaning on their Formula E electric racing teams for innovations to build better mass production EVs with greater range and efficiency, or a lower price tag. Formula E has struggled to win over many motorsports enthusiasts, with Formula One still attracting significantly bigger audiences because electric cars lack the sustained power and noise of the internal combustion engine. According to Bloomberg, Oil held gains after the US and UK made a fresh round of strikes against Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen, fanning tensions in the Middle East and offsetting concerns global supplies remain ample. US benchmark West Texas Intermediate traded near $75 a barrel after rallying by more than 2% on Monday, while Brent was just above $80. US and UK forces launched their latest attacks against eight Houthi targets in an effort to prevent the group from attacking commercial vessels in the Red Sea. According to Reuters, Japanese shares surged to fresh 34-year highs as the Bank of Japan stood pat on ultra-loose monetary policy, while Chinese stocks struggled as speculation of a huge rescue package from Beijing underwhelmed investors worried about the shaky economy. European markets are likely to open mostly flat, with Eurostox 50 futures up 0.1%. SP500 futures were flat although Nasdaq futures gained 0.1%. According to Reuters, Swatch Group reported a 5.2% increase in annual sales, the world's biggest watchmaker said on Tuesday, adding it saw excellent growth prospects for 2024. The maker of Omega, Tissot and Longines watches as well as its eponymous mass-market plastic watches said its sales increased to 7.89 billion Swiss francs, 
a rise of 5.2% in franc terms and a 12.6% increase when measured at constant exchange rates. According to Bloomberg, Z Entertainment Enterprises Limited tumbled as much as 10% after the cancellation of a planned $10 billion merger with Sony Group Corp. In India sparked a flurry of downgrades, with most analysts predicting a sharp contraction in its valuations. At least nine brokers including Citigroup Inc. and CLSA reduced their ratings on the stock as efforts to create an entertainment giant in Asia's biggest streaming market collapsed amid a stalemate over who will head the combined entity. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin has fallen almost 20% since the January 11th launch of the first exchange-traded funds investing directly in the token as speculators become more cautious about the potential impact of the products. The digital asset spiked to $49,021 on the day the ETFs from issuers including BlackRock Inc. and Fidelity Investments went live. Bitcoin traded at $39,718 as of 8.33 a.m. Tuesday in Singapore, a 19% drop from that intraday peak. According to Reuters, French healthcare company Sanofi has agreed to buy the drug development project INBRX101 from its parent company Inhibrex Inc. for around $2.2 billion, the company said on Tuesday. As part of this deal, Inhibrex shareholders will get $30 per share in cash, one contingent value right equal to $5 and 0.25 shares in new Inhibrex, a new publicly traded company. According to Reuters, French regulator CNIL said on Tuesday it had fined Amazon France Logistic 32 million euros for what the CNIL said was an excessively intrusive surveillance system set up to monitor the performance of staff. The CNIL said indicators tracking the inactivity time of employees' scanners had been put in place, and that such a system was illegal. It also said a system set up to measure the speed at which items were scanned was also excessive. According to Bloomberg, the cost to borrow the yuan in Hong Kong rose to the highest in almost two years, signaling its scarcity in the city, and reminding traders of a currency strengthening tactic once employed by Beijing. So-called overnight hyper, a gauge measuring the cost for Hong Kong banks to borrow yuan from each other, climbed to a level unseen since April 2022 on Tuesday. One- and three-month tenors also climbed, to the highest since late last year. According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan maintained ultra-easy monetary settings on Tuesday in a widely expected move, as policymakers allow more time to determine whether wage increases will broaden enough to keep inflation sustainably at its 2% target. Following are excerpts from BOJ Governor Kazuo Ueda's comments at his post-meeting news conference, which was conducted in Japanese, as translated by Reuters. According to Bloomberg, about nine banks are currently vying for a regional share of an ESG debt market that Barclays PLC estimates has the potential to grow to $800 billion. Just a few years ago, Credit Suisse was the only commercial bank arranging debt for nature swaps, bringing in private investors to help sovereign refinancings tied to nature conservation commitments. Last year, Bank of America Corp. became the second global lender to join the market when it completed a deal for Gabon. And Goldman Sachs Group Inc. HSBC Holdings PLC, Citigroup Inc., BNP Paribas SA, Standard Chartered PLC and Barclays have all signaled they're exploring similar transactions. According to Reuters, Finn Sustainable Logistics said on Tuesday it has acquired Urbit, giving it access to the bankrupt sustainable delivery company's customers including Alibaba's AliExpress, Inditex's Zara, and its technology. London-based Finn was launched in 2022 and uses a fleet of all-electric cargo bikes and vans to deliver tens of thousands of packages a day for customers like HelloFresh and IKEA. According to Reuters, British businesses are warning of a new wave of post-Brexit trade disruption because EU exporters are not ready for UK customs changes which start this month, and Britain's port infrastructure might be unprepared too. Britain left the European Union's single market in January 2021 but it has repeatedly delayed imposing checks on EU imports. According to Reuters, British online retailer Boohoo named former Betfair and Zoopla finance chief Stephen Marana as its new chief financial officer after Sean McCabe left with immediate effect on Tuesday. Confirming that trading was in line with market expectations, Boohoo said that McCabe's departure was by mutual agreement and with immediate effect. 
According to Bloomberg, the US and UK launched new airstrikes against eight Houthi targets in Yemen on Monday, the latest salvo in an allied effort to stop the group from harassing commercial shipping in the Red Sea. Monday night's strikes, which marked the eighth round of allied attacks in 12 days, targeted an underground storage site and locations linked to the Houthis missile and air surveillance capabilities, the two countries said in a statement along with partners Australia, Bahrain, Canada, and the Netherlands. It said the strikes were meant to disrupt and degrade the Houthis capabilities. According to Reuters, the ruble hit a one-week high against the dollar on Tuesday as the Russian government proposed extending capital controls that have buoyed the currency in recent months until the end of the year. At 0723 GMT, the ruble was 0.2% stronger against the dollar at 87.65, earlier hitting its strongest point since January 16. According to Reuters, struggling music investor Hypnosis Songs Fund said on Tuesday its investment advisor, which is backed by private equity firm Blackstone, had refused to drop the call option from their advisory agreement. Hypnosis Songs Management, which is responsible for managing more than 150 song catalogs, holds a call option that gives it the right to purchase the fund's portfolio if and when its agreement with the fund is terminated. According to Bloomberg, Better tax receipts and lower debt interest costs took the pressure of UK public finances in December, giving Chancellor Jeremy Hunt a boost as he seeks room for tax cuts in his March budget. The government borrowed £7.8 billion last month, down from £16.2 billion a year earlier and less than the £14 billion forecast by the Office for Budget Responsibility in November. It was the lowest December borrowing since 2019. According to Bloomberg, Chinese authorities are considering a package of measures to stabilize the slumping stock market, according to people familiar with the matter, after earlier attempts to restore investor confidence fell short and prompted Premier Li Chang to call for forceful steps. Policymakers are seeking to mobilize about 2 trillion yuan, mainly from the offshore accounts of Chinese state-owned enterprises, as part of a stabilization fund to buy shares onshore through the Hong Kong Exchange Link, said the people, asking not to be identified discussing a private matter. They have also earmarked at least 300 billion yuan of local funds to invest in onshore shares through China Securities Finance Corp. Our central Hujin Investment Limited, the people said. According to Bloomberg, the case is building for the Bank of Japan to increase interest rates at its April meeting, as investors tighten their focus on the outcome of spring wage negotiations, according to strategists. Still, the yen may touch the 150 level versus the dollar in the near term, they said after the BOJ stood pat on policy Tuesday as expected. According to Reuters, jailed Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny has been placed in solitary confinement for 10 days in a prison above the Arctic Circle for, incorrectly introducing himself, to a guard, his spokesperson said late on Monday. Navalny, 47, a former lawyer who rose to prominence more than a decade ago by lampooning President Vladimir Putin's elite and voicing allegations of vast corruption, as currently in a jail about 60 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. According to Bloomberg, foreign investors will steer clear of Turkish lira bonds until inflation reverses course and decelerates, according to Europe's biggest asset manager, a distant prospect that suggests inflows likely won't materialize until mid-year at best. My sense is that for international investors to go into the domestic bond market, I would ideally like to see inflation really ticking down, Sergei Strigo, co-head of emerging market debt at Amundi Saw, said in an interview. And we are yet to see that. That for me would be the main trigger point. According to Bloomberg, sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. Baiju's, once counted among the world's most valuable startups, is seeking to raise funds at a discount of more than 90% from its previous round to alleviate its financial problems. According to Reuters, global stocks neared one-month highs on Tuesday, after the Bank of Japan left monetary policy unchanged, bolstering the yen and Japanese stocks, while Chinese equity investors took little heart from speculation of a huge government rescue package. The MSCI All World Index was up 0.2%, near one-month highs, thanks in part to a 3% rebound in Hong Kong stocks that slumped the previous day, when foreign outflows gathered pace and short selling surged. 
According to Reuters, Thailand's current policy rate is neutral and while economic growth will be slower than expected this year, the current state of the economy was not a crisis, its central bank chief told Reuters on Tuesday. Bank of Thailand Governor Sithaput Suthawartnaruput said he had no concern about negative inflation, and added the government's short-term stimulus measures will not solve the country's economic problems as structural issues were holding back growth. According to Bloomberg, this year is already shaping up to be a tough one for investors to navigate, with heightened debate over central bank moves, prospects for economic slowdowns and crucial elections around the world all weighing on fund managers' minds. Against this backdrop, Bloomberg News asked executives at major investment firms with almost $2 trillion in combined assets under management about where they plan to put their money in 2024. According to Bloomberg, with the Red Sea crisis roiling shipments of everything from cars to energy, it's a matter of time before soaring costs and supply chain strains show up in companies' earnings reports. Several firms are already warning of the impact. Electric vehicle maker Tesla Inc. plans a two-week production halt at a German plant due shipment delays, while Sweden's Volvo Car AB has announced a three-day stoppage at its Belgian factory. British retailers Tesco PLC, Marks Spencer Group PLC and Next PLC have all flagged the risk of higher prices for consumers. According to Reuters, Eurozone banks expect a small rebound in the demand for mortgages and loans to companies early this year as a slump in lending shows early signs of moderating, a European Central Bank survey showed on Tuesday. The ECB's quarterly bank lending survey showed lenders continued to tighten access to credit in the last quarter of last year but fewer banks did so than at any point in the last two years. The proportion was also smaller than banks themselves had expected three months earlier. According to Reuters, Esken, the owner of London Southend Airport, is facing demands by a Carlyle fund to repay an outstanding convertible loan four years before its maturity date, the group said on Tuesday. The demands are part of a legal dispute over a convertible loan extended by Carlyle Global Infrastructure Fund in 2021. Convertible loans are a form of debt that can be transformed into a company's shares under certain conditions. According to Reuters, UBS on Tuesday unveiled its biggest branding campaign since 2016 to drive growth, spending tens of millions of dollars to freshen its image after the takeover of Credit Suisse. Switzerland's biggest lender will use the slogan, Banking is our craft, as it seeks to attract new customers to its wealth management, asset management, and investment banking franchises. According to Reuters, Germany can cut off state funding to the successor party to the far-right NPD even though it is not banned the Constitutional Court said on Tuesday in a landmark ruling which adds fuel to a debate about whether the nationalist AFD could be penalized. The court in Karlsruhe justified its decision by saying the National Democratic Party and its successor, Die Heimat, aim to impair or eliminate the country's democratic system. According to Reuters, Eurozone government bonds were little changed ahead of Thursday's European Central Bank policy meeting and after investors scaled back their bets on rate cuts early this year. A significant minority of economists in a Reuters poll, 38 of 85, said the first ECB cut would come in June. 21 said April, and 23 predicted it would occur in the third quarter and beyond that period. According to Yahoo Finance, Netflix is set to report its fiscal fourth quarter earnings on Tuesday after the market closes, and expectations are that the streaming giant ended 2023 on solid footing. New subscribers in the quarter are expected to surge by another 9 million or so, according to the company's own guidance. That suggests full-year 2023 net additions will sit at roughly 24 million. According to Reuters, India's Tamil Nadu state said on Tuesday that a joint venture of Corning agreed to invest 10 billion rupees, underscoring the growing importance of the South Asian country as a manufacturing hub. The joint venture, named Bharat Innovative Glass Technologies, is a tie-up between U.S. electronics maker Corning, a key parts supplier for Apple, and Indian telecommunications company Optimus Infracom. According to Reuters, Taiwanese electric vehicle battery maker Pro Logium Technology County expects mass production at a new factory in France to start from 2027, and is also eyeing an initial public offering, the company's chief executive officer said on Tuesday. French President Emmanuel Macron last year announced Pro Logium's 5.2 billion euro investment in a battery factory in the northern region of Dunkirk, 
adding to an emerging specialized cluster devoted to Europe's electric car industry. According to Bloomberg, Bill Gross has some advice for the Federal Reserve. Stop winding down its balance sheet now, and start cutting interest rates in coming months to avoid recession. I would stop quantitative tightening, the co-founder and former chief investment officer of Pacific Investment Management Company said on Bloomberg Television when asked what he would do differently if he were leading the Fed. That is just not a correct philosophy and policy at this point in time to continue to tighten quantitatively. According to Reuters, Bank of America on Tuesday announced layoffs of around 20 bankers in Asia, said three sources with knowledge of the matter, becoming the first major bank to downsize in 2024 as China and Hong Kong markets continue to underperform. The majority of the bankers affected are based in Hong Kong, according to two of the sources and a fourth person with knowledge of the matter. According to Bloomberg, Demand for credit in the eurozone may be bottoming out after falling for more than a year in the face of rising interest rates and a struggling economy, according to the European Central Bank. The ECB's quarterly bank lending survey, published Tuesday, showed that the drop in appetite for business and consumer loans was smaller in the fourth quarter than in the previous three months. According to Reuters, Budget airline Ryanair would be interested in acquiring Italian airport slots that might be relinquished as Ida Airways joins forces with Lufthansa, Ryanair CEO Michael O'Leary said on Tuesday. Speaking at a news conference in Rome, O'Leary said that Ryanair, which is the biggest airline operator in Italy, believed that slots should be released at Rome's Fiumicino Airport and the Malpensa and Lanati airports in Milan. According to Bloomberg, the French government pledged swift measures to allay farmers' concerns over rising costs and bureaucracy, an effort to stop the spread of protests that began in the country's southwest. Union leaders held talks with newly appointed Prime Minister Gabriel Adel and Agriculture Minister Marc Fesno for about two hours in Paris on Monday, after which both sides said they agreed on the diagnosis of the issues facing the industry. According to Bloomberg, Temu is attracting hordes of boomer and Generation X shoppers, belying the Chinese e-commerce app's reputation as a destination for younger consumers. In Temu's first full year of operation in the U.S., Gen Zers and baby boomers shopped there more frequently and spent more than younger shoppers, according to the Chicago research firm Attain. Boomers 59 and older were the most loyal, placing about six orders over 12 months, twice as many as Gen Z shoppers aged 18 to 26, according to Attain which mines credit card data from a panel of 6.5 million consumers. According to Bloomberg, no matter which way markets go, Goldman Sachs Group Inc. says some traders are modeled to sell stocks over the next week. Cullen Morgan, an equity derivatives and flows specialist at the bank, expects that commodity trading advisors are CTAs that surf the momentum of asset prices through long and short bets in the futures market could be forced to sell after building $129 billion in long positions. According to Bloomberg, Romania is tapping international markets for the first time in 2024 to take advantage of high demand for emerging market debt after its regional peers went ahead with euro and dollar offerings to fund their budget deficits. The Balkan nation is offering benchmark dollar bonds due 2029 and 2034 at an initial pricing talk in the area of 225 basis points over treasuries for the shorter dated debt and in the 265 basis points area for the longer dated notes, according to a person familiar with the matter, who asked not to be identified because they're not authorized to speak about it. According to Reuters, China's plunging stock market is leading to losses on billions of dollars worth of derivatives linked to the country's equity indexes, fueling further selling as retail investors offload their positions. Stock markets in Hong Kong and on the mainland plunged on Monday, extending a long spell of weakness driven by an exit of foreign investors alarmed by China's wobbly economy. According to Bloomberg, China's boldest plan yet to stem the current stock market route is facing a wall of skepticism as disillusioned investors say any rebound will prove fleeting without a fundamental fix for its ailing economy. A rare mix of positive news including a stabilization fund in the works and Premier Li Cheng's order to calm markets sent equity benchmarks rallying on Tuesday. However, China's history of botched market rescue efforts, the grim state of its economy, and uncertainties over Beijing's long-term policy roadmap are keeping investors skeptical about the sustainability of these gains. According to Reuters, 
embattled Indian edtech startup Baiju's is looking to raise more than $100 million from existing stakeholders but at a steep 90% discount to its $22 billion valuation in its last funding round in 2022, Bloomberg News reported on Tuesday. Baiju's, facing a host of legal and financial woes, is looking to sell fresh shares, including to founder Baiju Ravindran, to raise funds to pay vendors and stabilize its business, Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, Italian truck and bus maker Iveco Group has partnered with German chemicals group BASF for the recycling of lithium-ion batteries of its electric vehicles, the two companies said on Tuesday. The agreement, for which no financial details were provided, is part of Iveco's circular economy strategy, aiming to increase batteries' lifetime and reduce their overall environmental impact, the two companies said in a statement. According to Reuters, from hope to hesitancy and now total capitulation, global investors in China are heading for the exits in the world's second biggest economy and sending its stock market crashing. Stock markets in Hong Kong and Shanghai tumbled on Monday the Shanghai index marking its worst day since April 2022, as investors retreated from what was a must-have country in global portfolios just a year ago. According to Reuters, an investigation into accounting practices in Archer Daniels Midland's nutrition segment could not come at a worse time for the company as sinking crop prices look set to erode profit for its core grain trading and processing businesses this year. Before news of the accounting issues broke and sent Admiral shares tumbling 24% on Monday, the biggest fall since 1929 according to the Center for Research in Security Prices, the company had been forecasting the nutrition unit it has been expanding for much of the past decade would return to profit growth in 2024. According to Reuters, jury selection begins in Michigan on Tuesday in a rare trial of a parent who prosecutors have charged with being complicit in a mass shooting carried out by her son. Lawyers were set to start questioning prospective jurors in the manslaughter trial of Jennifer Crumbly, whose then 15-year-old son Ethan murdered four fellow students at Oxford High School in 2021 with a gun his parents had given him as a Christmas gift. According to Reuters, at a campaign speech in an American Legion hall in New Hampshire last week, Nikki Haley animatedly warned the U.S. must prepare for a war with China. Haley, the former ambassador to the United Nations under President Donald Trump, rattled off the size of the Chinese Navy, warned of China's advances in artificial intelligence and hypersonic missiles, and worried about the development of neurostrike, weapons that can scramble the brains of military commanders in the field. China has been preparing for war with the US for years, Haley told the crowd of about 100 people gathered on an icy night in Rochester. It needed to be treated like an enemy, not a competitor, and the US was not ready, she said. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures were subdued on Tuesday, with investors now awaiting a peak in the earnings season and economic data in a major test for Wall Street's sustenance of a recent rally that saw the SP500 scale record highs and enter a bull market. Megacap stocks lost some ground in pre-market trading, with Apple, Alphabet, Amazon.com and Meta platforms down between 0.2% and 0.3% as U.S. Treasury yields rose. According to Reuters, Vietnamese internet company VNG Limited has withdrawn its initial public offering registration in the United States, a statement filed to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission dated January 19 shows. Ho Chi Minh City headquartered VNG said in the statement it has determined not to conduct a registered offering at this time and intends to file a new registration statement in the future. According to Reuters, Johnson Johnson on Tuesday reported fourth-quarter profit above Wall Street expectations, helped by demand for its blockbuster psoriasis treatment Stellara and strength in its medical device unit. It expects higher revenue from its multiple myeloma drug Darcelex and newer oncology drugs such as Carvic T and Tecvaly to help it meet its 2025 pharmaceutical sales target of $57 billion. According to Reuters, at least two iron ore cargoes from the world's number four supplier Fortescue Metals Group are facing unusual customs delays at North China's Kaofedian port due to inspections for solid waste, sources with knowledge of the matter said. The cargoes were in two shipments totaling roughly 400,000 metric tons, the sources said, worth around $55 million, though only the portions earmarked for portside sale by Fortescue after arrival faced delay, while volumes already sold were little affected. According to Reuters, 
General Electric County on Tuesday reported a higher fourth-quarter profit as its business that makes aircraft engines benefited from strong demand for spare parts and services, while costs cuts helped narrow losses in its renewable energy unit. The Boston, Massachusetts-based company said adjusted profit for the quarter through December was $1.77 billion, compared with $1.37 billion reported a year earlier. According to Bloomberg, Mubadala Investment Company is seeking to roughly double its exposure to Asia, joining a bevy of Abu Dhabi-based entities eyeing opportunities in faster-growing emerging markets. Across Mubadala, out of our roughly $300 billion in assets under management, only 12% is in Asia today and we want to move that number closer to 25%. By as soon as 2030, Camilla Makapili Langwil, head of the fund's Life Sciences and Healthcare Investments Division said in an interview. According to Reuters, cancer drug developer CG Oncology said on Tuesday it was aiming to raise up to $306 million in its U.S. initial public offering, higher than it had previously expected. The move follows strong demand for new share sales after a dry spell that lasted nearly two years, thanks to firming bets of an interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve. According to Reuters, Weeks of attacks by Iranian-backed Houthi militants on vessels in the Red Sea have disrupted shipping in the Suez Canal, the fastest sea route between Asia and Europe, carrying around 15% of global sea trade. For the European economy, already skirting a mild recession as it tries to shake off high inflation, prolonged trade disruption could derail plans by central banks to start cutting interest rates this year. According to Reuters, Japanese nuclear power plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company wrapped up testing on Tuesday of the first drones to be deployed to the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi plant in its decades-long decommissioning process. A snake-shaped robot and four drones are set to be dispatched in February to survey the damage at Fukushima Daiichi's Unit 1 reactor, almost 13 years after its core melted down and triggered a hydrogen blast in one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. According to Reuters, Amusement park operators Six Flags Entertainment and Cedar Fair said they have received a request for additional information and documents from the U.S. Department of Justice, which is reviewing a merger of the two companies. The second request from DOJ in relation to the Six Flags and Cedar Fair merger comes at a time when deals in the U.S. are facing antitrust scrutiny from regulators, as well as consumer interest groups. According to Reuters, Fisker said on Tuesday it expects to sell all its nearly 5,000 unsold vehicles made last year by the end of the first quarter and that its newly announced dealer partner model has gained traction. More than 100 dealers in the United States, Canada, and Europe have expressed interest in becoming a Fisker dealer, the electric vehicle company said. According to Reuters, Verizon Communications forecast annual profit above estimates on Tuesday after strong demand for its wireless plans and Black Friday promotions helped the U.S. carrier post its highest quarterly subscriber additions in nearly two years. The telecom firm added net 449,000 monthly bill-paying wireless phone subscribers in the last three months of 2023, blowing past estimates of 223,800 additions, according to FactSet. According to Reuters, Wall Street's run-up to record highs will be put to the test in the coming weeks as heavily weighted U.S. technology-related companies open their books on the final quarter of 2023. The advance in the SP500, which posted a second straight all-time high close on Monday, has been driven in part by a rally in chipmakers and other top tech shares amid optimism around artificial intelligence. According to Reuters, Ivory Coast looks set to end a near two-year drought of international debt sales from sub-Saharan Africa when it finalizes its bond launch later on Tuesday. Many sub-Saharan African economies were hit hard by COVID-19, the fallout from Russia's war in Ukraine and rising global interest rates, which made foreign currency debt prohibitively expensive for most from early 2022 and locked them effectively out of international capital markets. According to Bloomberg, when a farmer accidentally ruptured a pipe while using an excavator last October, it took its operator, Williams Cuz, 65 minutes to isolate the leak. By the time it did, the line had emitted methane with a short-term climate impact roughly equal to the annual emissions from 17,000 U.S. cars. Both Williams and the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration said the accident could have been prevented if the farmer had called a program that marks the location of underground pipes with paint or flags for homeowners prior to any excavation or digging work. 
But PHMSA is also examining the time it took the operator to respond to and isolate the release, as part of an investigation into the incident. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures trod water on Tuesday, hitting pause on a record-setting rally as focus turned to the day's stream of earnings for insight into the health of corporate America and the economy. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures were little changed after the blue chip index broke above 38,000 for the first time on Monday. Futures on the SP500 wavered around the flatline to hold near a record close, while those on the tech heavy Nasdaq 100 were also muted. According to Reuters, Lockheed Martin forecast its 2024 profit below Wall Street expectations on Tuesday as the U.S. defense contractor's largest aeronautics segment that makes the F-35 jets faces supply chain disruptions. U.S. defense firms are seeing a notable increase in orders amid escalating tensions between China and the Philippines, the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, and in the Middle East. However, pandemic-related disruptions in labor and supply chains are weighing on the sector. According to Reuters, Investors in construction technology startups are going to be cautious in the first half of the year as geopolitical factors, market demand and U.S. elections weigh, said the head of Mexican cement maker Cemex's venture capital arm. We're going to keep being cautious, Gonzalo Galindo, who leads Cemex Ventures, told Reuters ahead of the publication of its annual report on Tuesday. We're going to keep trying to see how all these variables play out or diminish in the future. According to Reuters, Synchrony Financial said on Tuesday it expects its interest income for 2024 to rise as strong consumer spending brushed aside worries about an economic slowdown. Even as wallets tightened due to inflation and soaring interest rates, spending on the company's credit cards remained resilient. According to Reuters, futures for Canada's main stock index edged higher on Tuesday, aided by higher metal prices while investors remained focused on the Bank of Canada's meeting on Wednesday for clues about the timing of interest rate cuts. March futures on the SPTSX index were up 0.3% at 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time, while their U.S. peers were mixed. According to Bloomberg, on a recent flying visit to Archer Daniels, Midlands European base, the company's chief financial officer Vikram Luthar had a pessimistic message to deliver. Speaking to employees in role, a small Swiss town on the shore of Lake Geneva, Luthar said operating costs across the company were continuing to go up and that everyone had to find ways to boost margins, according to a person familiar with the events, who asked not be identified describing internal meetings. According to Reuters, a recovery in the global video game market is expected to pick up pace this year on the back of strong sales of Microsoft's Xbox and Sony's PlayStation 5 consoles, according to research firm Nuzu. The market is set to grow 2.8% to $189.3 billion in 2024, after it rose around 0.6% last year and ended a post-COVID decline that had led to layoffs at several video game firms, Nuzu said. According to Reuters, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Tuesday pledged $45 million in additional financing to help fight conflict and bring stability to coastal West Africa where insecurity linked to jihadist insurgencies has increased in recent years. Blinken is on the second stop of a four-nation tour of Africa taking him to Cape Verde, Ivory Coast, Nigeria and Angola from January 21-26. According to Reuters, identity protection company Silverfort said on Tuesday it had raised $116 million in a late-stage funding round, led by investment firm Brighton Park Capital with participation from City Ventures and General Motors Ventures. Cybersecurity has taken center stage in recent years as companies and other major institutions, including governments, ramp up spending to protect their assets, customers and employees against hacks and data theft. According to Reuters, Logitech International is facing 30-day delays in getting its products from its factories in Asia to Europe due to the Red Sea crisis the computer peripheral maker's CEO said on Tuesday. The maker of computer keyboards, mice, speakers and webcams is the latest company to warn of the impact of attacks by Houthi militants in Yemen on shipping in the Red Sea, a shipping route vital to east-west trade. According to Bloomberg, Halliburton Company joined rival SLB in boosting its quarterly dividend as the world's biggest oilfield contractors gear up for an international boom amid slowing shale work. 
The top provider of fracking services will lift its payout by 6% to 17 cents a share, the highest since the onset of the pandemic, after posting fourth quarter earnings that beat expectations. Halliburton generated $1.1 billion in free cash flow, its best quarter in more than two decades. According to Reuters, the pound touched its highest against the euro in four months on Tuesday, supported by indications that the British economy is holding up and the Bank of England will likely cut rates later than its peers. The euro dropped as low as 85.48 pence, its lowest since early September and was last down 0.12% at 85.53 pence. According to Reuters, Apple on Tuesday asked a London tribunal to throw out a mass lawsuit valued at around $1 billion brought on behalf of more than 1,500 app developers over its App Store fees. The case, worth up to £785 million and one of several faced by the tech giant in the United Kingdom, alleges Apple charged third-party developers unfair commissions of up to 30% on purchases of apps or other content. According to Bloomberg, the biggest U.S. cryptocurrency exchange could fall victim to a slump in Bitcoin and waning enthusiasm for exchange-traded funds that invest directly in the digital token, according to J.P. Morgan Chase Company. We think the catalyst in Bitcoin ETFs that has pushed the ecosystem out of its winter will disappoint market participants, analysts led by Kenneth Worthington wrote in a note on Monday, downgrading Coinbase Global Inc. to underweight from neutral. According to Reuters, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin made his first public appearance, virtually and from home since his secret hospitalization, during a meeting on Ukraine's military needs on Tuesday. Austin, 70, was admitted to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Maryland on December 22 to treat prostate cancer. He returned to the hospital on January 1 due to complications, including a urinary tract infection. His hospitalization was not revealed until four days later, and the Pentagon did not specify why he was being treated until January 9. According to Reuters, Bitcoin has fallen over one-fifth since its peak earlier this month, hit after the United States approved its first spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund, as investors who had bought in expectation of the approval sold after the confirmation. The world's largest cryptocurrency was last at $38,900, down 20.6% from around $49,000 the three-year high it hit on January 11 in the wake of the decision by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to approve spot Bitcoin ETFs. According to Reuters, Packar Inc. beat estimates for fourth-quarter profit and revenue estimates on Tuesday, on sustained demand for its fuel-efficient truck models. Shares of the U.S. truckmaker were up 1.5% in pre-market trading. According to Bloomberg, General Electric Company predicts profit this quarter will fall short of Wall Street's expectations as the manufacturer continues to see a disparity between its growing aerospace operations and a recovering energy business. Adjusted earnings will be 60 to 65 cents a share, GE said Tuesday in a statement that also detailed fourth quarter results. That missed the 70-cent average of analyst estimates compiled by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, asset manager Invesco on Tuesday reported a loss in the fourth quarter compared to a profit last year, hurt by lower fees and a non-cash asset impairment charge of $1.2 billion. The charge was related to some management contracts of U.S. retail mutual funds that Invesco had previously acquired. According to Bloomberg, the former CEO of Brazilian retail giant Americanas saw was mostly invisible to the public. He avoided press interviews, was distant from investors and analysts, and very few public photos of him even exist. Now, Miguel Gutierrez is infamous. According to Reuters, funds are adopting an increasingly bearish stance in the copper market, preferring to focus on a globally weak demand picture rather than signs of supply chain stress. Money manager positioning on the CME's copper contract has swung from net long at the start of the year to the largest net short since the middle of 2022. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Reserve will wait until the second quarter before cutting interest rates, according to a majority of economists polled by Reuters, with June seen more likely than May and less easing forecast this year than markets now expect. Since September, economists have broadly expected the first rate cut around mid-2024 
but since last month's Fed meeting markets began pricing in a move in March after Chair Jerome Powell said that a discussion of cuts was coming into view. According to Yahoo Finance, Netflix and TKO Group Holdings WWE announced a new partnership early Tuesday that will bring WWE's flagship program Raw to the streaming service, beginning January 2025. The 10-year deal marks Netflix's first big venture into the world of live sports entertainment while Raw will be leaving linear television for the first time since its inception 31 years ago. The program currently airs on NBC Universal's USA Network and draws in 17.5 million unique viewers a year, according to the companies. According to Reuters, Microsoft search engine Bing, Brower Edge and advertising services are likely to be out of the purview of Europe's Digital Markets Act. Bloomberg News reported on Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. European watchdogs concluded that the products are not dominant enough to be regulated as part of a five-month-long investigation into the market that is set to end in February, the report said. According to Reuters, blockbuster takeovers by oil and gas majors pushed the value of U.S. energy dealmaking last year to a record $192 billion, more than triple the amount in 2022 according to data from analytics firms in Veris on Tuesday. Acquisitions in the Permian Shale Basin straddling West Texas and New Mexico, the largest U.S. oil field, soared in the last two years as oil prices jumped on strong demand after Russia's invasion of Ukraine and producers sought producing wells to guarantee future supplies. According to Reuters, Poland and the Baltic states are calling for import bans on Russian aluminium and liquefied natural gas for the European Union's 13th package of sanctions against Moscow over its Ukraine invasion, a Polish official said. The EU is aiming to pull together more measures ahead of the second anniversary of the Ukraine war at the end of February. But diplomats said they are running out of options that would have enough support from EU member states. According to Reuters, a California startup using artificial intelligence and satellites to spot fire and weather risks on power lines, iDash, reported on Tuesday it had raised $50 million in new funding, reflecting Silicon Valley efforts to create products that help energy companies adapt to climate change. Power utilities are under pressure to cut risks of forest fires and storm-based outages after massive fires have been sparked by power lines and weather events brought down lines. At the same time, Loads on the grid are likely to rise as electricity displaces fossil fuel in applications such as electric vehicles and home heat pumps. According to Reuters, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Egypt's Abdel Fattah al-Sisi on Tuesday inaugurated the construction of a new unit at Egypt's Daba nuclear power plant via video link, as Moscow moves ahead with its global nuclear ambitions. The power plant is being built by the Russian state corporation Rosatom at a reported cost of $30 billion, and will consist of four power units with a combined capacity of 4.8 gigawatts. According to Reuters, Johnson Johnson on Tuesday said it had reached a tentative settlement to resolve probes by U.S. states into whether it misled consumers about the safety of its talc products, which thousands of lawsuits claim can cause cancer. The deal includes 42 states and Washington, D.C. The company tentatively agreed to pay about $700 million to settle the state's claims, according to the Wall Street Journal. According to Reuters, Lufthansa's bid for a minority stake in Ida Airways could reduce competition in flights to and from Italy, EU antitrust regulators warned on Tuesday, ramping up pressure on the German carrier to offer stronger remedies. Lufthansa wants to acquire a 41% stake in the state-owned Italian carrier for €325 million Euros as part of a capital increase. According to Reuters, Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma and chairman Zhou Tsai bought millions worth of shares in the Chinese e-commerce giant in the fourth quarter, the New York Times reported on Tuesday, sending the company's U.S. listed shares up around 7%. Ma bought $50 million worth of Hong Kong traded stock, the report said citing a person with knowledge of the matter. According to Reuters, the United States plans to announce a new executive order to seek to prevent foreign adversaries from accessing troves of highly sensitive personal data about Americans and people connected to the U.S. government, Bloomberg News reported on Tuesday. The draft order focuses on ways that foreign adversaries are gaining access to Americans' highly sensitive personal data through legal means and through intermediaries like data brokers, third-party vendor agreements, employment agreements or investment agreements, the report added.
According to Reuters, the benchmark SP500 and the Nasdaq were flat on Tuesday as a mixed bag of earnings from industry bellwethers threatened to douse a recent rally, while the Dow treaded water on the back of losses in 3M. According to Reuters, Stellantis aims to become leader in the commercial vehicle market worldwide by 2030, by launching an offensive in North America and picking up opportunities in Asia, its chief executive said on Tuesday. We need a few years, by the end of our 2030 business plan we have the potential to become market leader, CEO Carlos Taveras said in a press conference during his visit at the group's plant in the town of Atessa, in central Italy, Europe's largest van-making facility. According to Reuters, U.S. union membership rates fell to a fresh record low in 2023 despite it being a year of headline-grabbing organized labor strikes from the Rust Belt to Hollywood and some continued organizing successes at companies such as Starbucks. The union membership rate fell to 10.0% from what had already been a record low 10.1% in 2022, the Labor Department said on Tuesday in an annual census of the U.S. organized labor landscape. According to Reuters, a win for Republican frontrunner Donald Trump in the U.S. presidential election this November would mean a certain amount of unpredictability for Canada, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said on Tuesday. According to Reuters, Canada stocks hit a one-week high on Tuesday, boosted by gains in mining stocks due to rising metal prices, with investors keeping a close eye on the Bank of Canada's Wednesday meeting for insights into the future path of its monetary policy. According to Reuters, the European Union is unlikely to confiscate Russian central bank assets frozen in Europe, despite G7 plans to discuss the legality of such a move at a meeting in February, senior EU officials said. The EU, United States, Japan and Canada froze some $300 billion of Russian central bank assets in 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine. Some $200 billion of that is held in Europe, mainly in the Belgian clearinghouse Euroclear. According to Reuters, Martin Shkreli, known for once hiking the price of a life-saving drug more than 4,000%, cannot return to the pharmaceutical industry after a federal appeals court on Tuesday upheld his lifetime ban. A three-judge panel of the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Manhattan said a lower court judge acted properly in imposing the ban because of Shkreli's antitrust violations. According to Yahoo Finance, Oil futures wavered on Tuesday after Libya restarted production at its largest oil field while freezing temperatures across North Dakota continued to impact output. West Texas Intermediate dropped as much as 1%, before moving up towards the flatline midday, trading north of $74 per barrel. Brent futures was trading near $79 per barrel after rising almost 2% in the prior session. According to Yahoo Finance, Tesla's stock has had a bumpy ride so far in 2024, with shares sliding as the broader market hits new highs. Investors will be hoping the EV stalwart's fourth quarter earnings, due after the bell on Wednesday, could spell some relief. Headlines like rental car firm Hertz shedding thousands of EVs, Tesla cutting prices in China, a two-week production halt in Berlin, and CEO Elon Musk's ill-timed demand for more stock have weighed on Tesla. Tesla shares are down over 15% since the start of year, with the SP500 up nearly 2%. According to Bloomberg, U.S. Senator Bob Menendez said the FBI misled judges to obtain search warrants that led to the seizure of almost $500,000 in cash and 13 gold bars at his New Jersey home that are at the heart of a bribery case against him. Menendez's lawyers said in a court filing Monday seeking to suppress the evidence that agents falsely characterized a conversation in Arabic involving a confidential source. The FBI later ransacked his belongings after improperly obtaining multiple warrants for his home, devices and iCloud account, the lawyers said. According to Reuters, hedge funds bought more U.S. stocks than they sold last week for the first time in 10 weeks, adding $554 million to their portfolios, Bank of America said in a note about its clients' flows. The hedge fund's net purchases occurred in a week when the SP500 index posted a record high close on Friday for the first time in two years, amid a rally in chipmakers and megacap technology stocks. According to Bloomberg, Los Angeles Clippers point guard Russell Westbrook joined the group of investors who took over a sprawling Arizona youth sports facility that hammered bondholders with losses when it collapsed into bankruptcy. Westbrook, 
a nine-time National Basketball League All-Star, will also lead the facility's basketball programming and community outreach efforts. According to Reuters, Germany's 10-year government bond yield hit its highest level in seven weeks on Tuesday ahead of Thursday's European Central Bank policy meeting as investors scale back bets on interest rate cuts early this year. A significant minority of economists in a Reuters poll, 38 of 85, said the first ECB cut would come in June. 21 said April, and 23 predicted it would occur in the third quarter or beyond. According to Bloomberg, Alibaba Group Holding Limited. Shares jumped after the New York Times reported that founder Jack Ma has been buying up shares in the company. Ma and Alibaba chairman Joe Tsai have both been buying up shares in recent months as the stock plunged, the newspaper reported Tuesday, citing unidentified people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, Germany's Motor Transport Authority KBA has initiated proceedings against BMW over suspicion of manipulating emissions values in its X3 2-liter diesel model, newspaper Bild reported on Tuesday. The KBA said the case concerns suspicion of use of a defeat device in the engine control of the X3 vehicle, Bild reported, without providing further detail on the case or number of vehicles affected. According to Reuters, Italy's penny-pinching approach to incentives has meant several months of reduced automotive production, the head of Stellantis, the country's sole major automaker, said on Tuesday. Stellantis has been asking the Italian government for the last nine months to support EV sales, CEO Carlos Taveras said during a visit to the group's plant in the town of Atessa, central Italy, Europe's largest van-making facility. According to Bloomberg, Verizon Communications Inc. added more retail mobile customers in the fourth quarter than it has in any period since 2021, signaling a potential turning point for the phone giant that has been struggling to regain market share from competitors. Verizon's consumer group added 318,000 mobile subscribers in the three months ended December 31st, the company reported Tuesday in a statement, beating Wall Street's estimates of 95,900. The net gain, the first one after three down quarters, comes as the New York-based company works to win customers lost to rivals at Inc. and T-Mobile US Inc. According to Reuters, Mischi's Global Equities Index was down slightly with a mixed bag of US earnings reports while the dollar rose against the yen after the Bank of Japan left monetary policy unchanged. US Treasury yields rose as investors sought a greater return for the risk of taking on rising government debt issuance before $162 billion in shorter-term treasuries are auctioned this week. According to Reuters, unemployment rates increased in 15 US states in December, a rise from the prior month, but was unchanged in the majority of states in the District of Columbia, a report showed Tuesday. Non-farm payroll employment levels, meanwhile, remained essentially unchanged in all states last month from November, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics data. From a year earlier, employment rose in 30 states while remaining essentially unchanged in 20 others in D.C. According to Reuters, North Korea is developing artificial intelligence and machine learning for everything from how to respond to COVID-19 and safeguard nuclear reactors to wargaming simulations and government surveillance, according to a new study. International sanctions imposed over its nuclear weapons program may have hindered North Korea's attempts to secure AI hardware, but it appears to be pursuing the latest technology, wrote study author Hyuk Kim of the James Martin Center for Nonproliferation Studies in California. According to Reuters, BP expects the Calypso Deepwater Natural Gas Field off Trinidad and Tobago, which it shares with Woodside Energy to get the green light when a final investment decision is made as early as the end of next year, a company executive said. BP, which holds a 30% stake in the Calypso discoveries that holds an estimated of 3.5 trillion cubic feet of gas, had previously forecast the FID could be made in 2026. According to Bloomberg, no political deepfake has alarmed the world's disinformation experts more than the doctored audio message of US President Joe Biden that began circulating over the weekend. In the phone message, a voice edited to sound like Biden urged voters in New Hampshire not to cast their ballots in Tuesday's Democratic primary. Save your vote for the November election, the phone message went. It even made use of one of Biden's signature phrases, what a bunch of malarkey. In reality, the president isn't on the ballot in the New Hampshire race, and voting in the primary doesn't preclude people from participating in November's election.
According to Reuters, Cubans are preparing for a new wave of inflation after the government last week rolled out details of an austerity plan that economists say will touch nearly every facet of the communist-run island's already flailing economy. The measures, which include price and tax increases and cuts in subsidies, will slow a soaring budget deficit forecast to exceed 18% of gross domestic product and set the stage for growth, according to Prime Minister Manuel Marrero. According to Reuters, Commerce Bank chief executive Manfred Knopf on Tuesday played down prospects of a possible merger with larger rival Deutsche Bank, saying such a tie-up was not under discussion at his bank and he was striving to keep the bank independent. The comments come amid heightened speculation that merger talks with Deutsche, which failed in 2019 could once again come to the fore. According to Bloomberg, emerging market stocks paired an advance spurred by speculation of fresh stimulus measures for China's economy as investors assessed the likely effectiveness of such moves. MSCI's index for developing nation equities rose as much as 0.9%, before trimming its gains to be 0.3% higher by 12.28 p.m. in Johannesburg. The equivalent gauge for emerging currencies traded flat, as the dollar retraced earlier losses. According to Reuters, Suriname should boost incentives for energy companies looking to develop oil and gas discoveries, said Zamri Basseri, head of Malaysia's Petronas in the South American country. Basseri did not specify the incentives his company is looking for, but lower royalties and taxes, are commercial incentives often hasten investment decisions by energy companies. According to Bloomberg, Electricité de France saw's nuclear project at Hinkley Point will cost as much as £10 billion extra to build and take several years longer than planned, the latest in a series of setbacks for the budget and timeline of the UK's flagship station. EDF now expects the two reactors it's building in southwest England to cost between £31 billion and £35 billion in 2015 terms, the French energy company said in a statement on Tuesday. That's up from an estimate of £25 billion to £26 billion in 2022, and is the fifth budget increase in eight years. According to Bloomberg, even for one of the wealthiest municipalities in the U.S., operating a nursing home is a strain. Greenwich, Connecticut, owns a 121-year-old nursing home. That makes it unusual, since only 5% of nursing homes are government-owned. According to Reuters, the Los Angeles Times plans to lay off 94 journalists who belong to the newspaper's union, the head of the union said on Tuesday, adding to a string of job cuts that have swept the media industry in recent weeks. The layoffs represent about a fourth of the union's membership, but are far lower than the number of guild layoffs initially expected last week, said Matt Pierce, an LA Times reporter who heads the union representing the journalists. According to Reuters, Germany's finance minister said on Tuesday that the country can't keep up Ukraine's defense capabilities on its own in the long term and that others will need to increase bilateral contributions. It cannot be that Germany does more to help Ukraine so that others do less, he said at an event organized by the German Eastern Business Association, calling instead for a fair burden sharing of costs at the EU level. The minister viewed the country as ready for EU membership and in line with EU values, but said there were still reforms that needed to be made for private sector investment to take off. According to Reuters, the Canadian dollar was little changed against its U.S. counterpart on Tuesday, with the currency giving back its earlier gains as oil prices fell and investors weighed prospects of a dovish shift this week from the Bank of Canada. The loonie was trading nearly unchanged at 1.3480 to the greenback, or 74.18 U.S. cents, after moving in a range of 1.3454 to 1.3491. According to Reuters, Vivendi, Telecom Italia's top investor, is asking the EU antitrust regulator to look into the role played by the Italian Treasury in a planned buyout of the former phone monopoly's network assets, the company said in a letter. Tim agreed in November to sell its prized landline grid to US fund KKR in a landmark deal, worth up to €22 billion, Euros, aimed at slashing Tim's debt and staff. According to Reuters, Nomura Securities was sued in New York by a former quantitative researcher who said she was underpaid relative to men and fired after insisting that her team should stop discriminating against women. Shui Fung filed her lawsuit on Monday in federal court in Manhattan, seeking unspecified damages for alleged violations of federal civil rights, 
equal pay and medical leave laws, and New York state and city human rights laws. According to Bloomberg, United Airlines Holdings Inc. Chief Executive Officer Scott Kirby criticized Boeing Co.'s handling of manufacturing miscues and said the carrier is reconsidering its order for the largest 737 MAX model, which is already years behind schedule. I'm disappointed that the manufacturing challenges do keep happening at Boeing, Kirby said in an interview Tuesday on CNBC. They are taking action, I just want them to do it faster. According to Reuters, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Tuesday said that clear and repeated rejection of the two-state solution at the highest levels of the Israeli government is unacceptable, as he appealed for more aid access throughout the Gaza Strip. The entire population of Gaza is enduring destruction at a scale and speed without parallel in recent history, Guterres told the UN Security Council. Nothing can justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. According to Reuters, Vietnam's ambassador to the United States on Tuesday urged Washington to end its non-market economy label on Hanoi, warning that maintaining the resulting punitive duties on Vietnamese goods is bad for increasingly close bilateral ties. Last year, the U.S. Commerce Department said it was reviewing Vietnam's non-market economy status after Hanoi argued that it should be removed from the list applied in anti-dumping cases given economic reforms of recent years. According to Bloomberg, there's a lot riding on Netflix Inc. to demonstrate that it's back in growth mode after a pandemic hangover, when the streaming giant reports earnings after market on Tuesday. The stock has gained more than 40% since Netflix's last report in October, which showed subscriber additions that blew past expectations. Wall Street sees this trend continuing, with revenue rising 11% in the fourth quarter. That would be its fastest expansion in two years, when the company got a boost from the stay-at-home economy. According to Reuters, Boeing issued a bulletin to its suppliers late last week that laid out practices to ensure bolts are properly torqued after multiple airlines reported loose hardware during inspections of the grounded 737 MAX 9, according to a memo seen by Reuters. The U.S. planemaker said that it is imperative that suppliers meet quality requirements, according to a January 17 memo seen by Reuters, issued weeks after an accident when a panel ripped off of a 737 MAX 9 jet while in midair. According to Yahoo Finance, homebuilder stocks have been one of the brightest spots in the market's rally, but news out Tuesday shows the sector remains sensitive to interest rates and their influence on the housing market. Shares of D.R. Horton sank by 9% Tuesday after the homebuilder reported weaker than expected quarterly orders and posted first quarter earnings per share that missed analyst estimates. Investor reaction also dragged down the SPDRSP homebuilders ETF by as much as 3%. According to Bloomberg, D.R. Horton Inc. shares tumbled after the homebuilder reported weaker than expected quarterly orders and indicated the price cuts and other buyer incentives that have propped up sales will continue. For the three months through December, purchase contracts were up 35% from the same period a year earlier, according to a statement Tuesday, but fell short of what analysts had estimated. The shares were down 9% to $143.50 at 10.44 a.m. New York time, the biggest intraday decline since June 2020. According to Yahoo Finance, last year, taxpayers saw the phase out of pandemic era tax breaks and the return to pre COVID amounts for popular credits like the Earned Income Tax Credit and Child Tax Credit. Besides the IRS's paper backlog and confusion around reporting payments from apps like Venmo and PayPal, last tax season was more of a return to normal. According to Bloomberg, Banco BTG Pactual SA and Farallon Capital Management are considering injecting fresh money into troubled utility light SA, according to people familiar with the matter. The firms, both of which are light creditors, are mulling new loans for company, including convertible notes, said the people, who asked not to be named discussing internal deliberations. The loans would be contingent on light reaching an agreement with regulators to allow it to charge higher rates for the power it sells in Rio de Janeiro, the people said adding that talks are in early stages and may not lead to a deal. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden will speak to United Auto Workers members on Wednesday at a legislative conference in Washington, the union said Tuesday, as he looks to win support from auto workers before the 2024 presidential election.
UAW President Sean Fain declined to comment Monday on reports the union may endorse Biden's re-election bid this week. Fain sharply criticized former President Donald Trump, who is seeking a return to the White House, telling Reuters the Republican, as pretty much contrary to everything we stand for. According to Bloomberg, some investors in U.S. initial public offerings are demanding rules what they see as unequal treatment in the rules around how stock is allocated to so-called cornerstone investors in new listings. An overwhelming 87% of 62 institutional investors said anchor investors, who agree to buy IPO shares before the offerings are sold to a broader group, should be required to hold onto their shares for a specified period after the listing, according to a KKR Capital Market Survey in December. In several prominent recent U.S. listings where the companies chose to involve so-called cornerstones, no such restrictions on selling were imposed. According to Bloomberg, after Digital World Acquisition Corpy's wild surge Monday, some options traders are betting shares may double within days. Options volume in the stock has soared in the past two sessions, with a record number of contracts having already changed hands this week. Meanwhile, shares of the firm, a blank check company seeking to take Donald Trump's social media firm public, rallied 88%, before pairing some of the gains Tuesday. According to Reuters, Southwest Airlines flight attendants voted to approve a strike against the carrier, the Transport Workers Union of America Local 556 Union said on Tuesday. Over 98% of the members voted in favor, marking the first time in the union's history that flight attendants authorized a strike against the company. According to Reuters, ratings agency Fitch Ratings forecasts a decline in economic growth across Latin America this year amid dampened demand, high borrowing rates and considerable exposure to China and the U.S., which are also facing a slowdown. The agency put its average 2024 growth forecast for the region at 1.5 percent, down from 2.3 percent in 2023. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Canada is likely to keep interest rates unchanged on Wednesday but tweak its messaging as it considers when to start loosening monetary policy. Economists and markets say policymakers will keep the benchmark overnight rate at 5% for a fourth consecutive meeting. Officials will say they're waiting for more data as they weigh the state of the economy against inflation risks, such as rising wages and a resurgence of supply chain concerns. According to Reuters, Treasury yields rose on Tuesday as investors await economic growth and inflation data later in the week that could influence when the Federal Reserve decides to cut interest rates. The Treasury sold $60 billion in two-year notes at a. According to Reuters, Netflix on Tuesday blew past Wall Street subscriber estimates in the fourth quarter, driven by a strong slate of shows that included the final season of the long-running royal drama, The Crown, and David Fincher's original film, The Killer. The company reported it added 13.1 million subscribers in the December quarter, its largest fourth-quarter subscriber growth ever, handily exceeding projected gains of 8.97 million. That brings the total number of subscribers to 260 million. According to Reuters, the SP500 climbed to a record high close on Tuesday as investors digested a mixed bag of early quarterly results and awaited a slew of additional reports from Netflix. Tesla and other companies later this week. It was the third straight all-time high for the benchmark stock index, and many investors view upcoming quarterly reports from the heavily weighted, magnificent 7 inches group of megacap companies as key to whether Wall Street's recent rally continues or loses steam. According to Reuters, three new Russian strikes injured two people and damaged infrastructure on Tuesday in a district of Kharkiv, Ukraine's second-largest city, Regional Governor Ole Sinehubov said. Sinehubov, writing on the Telegram messaging app, said the latest of three attacks on the city in a single day damaged dwellings and an educational institution. Two people were being treated in hospital. According to Reuters, abortion pill maker Danko Laboratories on Tuesday urged the U.S. Supreme Court to reverse a lower court's decision that would curb access to the medication as the company seeks to defend how the medication is delivered and distributed. Danko filed a written brief outlining its main arguments to preserve broad access to the pill, called Mifepristone, in its appeal of an August decision by the New Orleans-based Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals that barred telemedicine prescriptions and shipments by mail of the drug. The legal challenge to the pill was brought in Texas by anti-abortion groups and doctors. 
According to Reuters, Canada's commodity-linked main stock index rose to a one-week high on Tuesday as mining shares rallied on hopes that China would take measures to support its ailing economy. The Toronto Stock Exchange's SPTSX Composite Index ended up 110.29 points, or 0.5%, at 21,034.59, its fourth straight day of gains and its highest closing level since January 15. According to Reuters, senior British Conservative lawmaker Simon Clark called on Tuesday for a change of Prime Minister saying Rishi Sunak was leading the governing party into an election later this year, where we will be massacred. Since Sunak pushed through his Rwanda immigration plan last week, ignoring the demands of several in his party's right wing to toughen it, some have been increasingly vocal in their criticism of the British leader, fearing he has little chance of reducing the opposition Labour parties led before the election. According to Reuters, the U.S. Internal Revenue Service on Tuesday said it was redesigning hundreds of types of notices mailed to taxpayers to make them simpler, clearer, and understandable in the hopes that this will help improve compliance and reduce taxpayer anxiety. The IRS and the U.S. Treasury rolled out the Simple Notice Initiative, with 31 redesigned notices for the 2024 tax filing season, which starts on Monday. According to Reuters, Six of Canada's biggest pension funds managing C$1.3 trillion in assets have begun a major expansion into private credit, moving into an area previously dominated by banks. Canada Pension Plan Investments, Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, Ontario Municipal Employees Retirement System, OP Trust, Healthcare of Ontario Pension Plan and British Columbia Investment Management Corporation told Reuters they intend to increase their exposure to private credit typically tailored loans to companies underwritten by non-banks. According to Reuters, Chilean retailer Falabella plans to invest $508 million in 2024, with more than half the sum destined for store openings and remodeling, and other expenditures for e-commerce and digital banking and logistics, the firm said on Tuesday. The planned spending for this year will mark a 24% drop from the year before, the company noted in a statement. According to Reuters, an Oregon state jury on Tuesday ordered Pacificorp, an Oregon electric utility owned by billionaire Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, to pay at least $62 million to nine homeowners whose properties were damaged by wildfires that devastated the state in 2020, according to an attorney for the plaintiffs. Jurors in Portland, where Pacificorp is based, issued the award following a trial that started January 9 in Multnomah County Circuit Court. According to Bloomberg, Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is planning to announce changes to tax cuts due to come into effect in July, local media report, a politically risky move after he pledged ahead of the 2022 election there would be no alterations to the package. Albanese's cabinet signed off on the changes to the legislation, known as the Stage 3 tax cuts, following a meeting on Tuesday, according to the Australian Financial Review. The new legislation will be put to the centre-left Labour Party's lawmakers ahead of an announcement by the Prime Minister. According to Reuters, the United States is carrying out strikes in Iraq against targets linked to Iran-backed militia, U.S. officials told Reuters on Tuesday, with one saying it was a response to a weekend attack on an Iraqi airbase that wounded U.S. forces. U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria have been attacked about 150 times by Iran-aligned militants since the Israel-Gaza war started in October. According to Reuters, Airbus helicopters saw a 9% increase in net orders last year but deliveries rose fractionally as the civil market struggled to recapture pre-COVID levels, the company said on Tuesday. The world's largest commercial helicopter manufacturer said it had won 393 net orders in 2023, up from 362 a year earlier, are 410 gross orders before adjusting for cancellations. According to Reuters, a $3 billion bet on Walt Disney by Nelson Peltz's Trian Fund Management was largely responsible for the investment management firm's underperformance last year relative to its activist hedge fund peers, according to financial details provided to Reuters by a Trian investor. The previously unreported details illustrate the high financial stakes for Trian as it seeks to shake up Disney's board in this year's highest-profile proxy contest. According to Reuters, Steel Dynamics reported a 33% fall in its fourth-quarter profit on Tuesday, hurt by higher raw material costs and lower product pricing. 
The Fort Wayne, Indiana-based company produces a host of steel products and processing recycled ferrous and non-ferrous metals, which are used in several industries including automotive, railroad and construction. According to Reuters, Morgan Stanley Direct Lending Fund said on Tuesday it had raised $103.35 million in its initial public offering. The fund chiefly invests in riskier bonds, like those issued by middle market companies or by private equity firms looking to finance their acquisitions. According to Bloomberg, Japan's financial regulator will examine banks' vulnerability to potential risks stemming from rising interest rates, including exposure to highly leveraged borrowers and real estate as the country's central bank looks set to switch course. The Bank of Japan is widely expected to make its first rate hike since 2007 within a few months. This raises the possibility that some borrowers will struggle to make higher interest payments. According to Bloomberg, U.S. forces carried out airstrikes against an Iran-backed militia in Iraq after the group had attacked an airbase where American troops are stationed. The three targets included the headquarters of Kataib Hebla as well as a training facility and storage space for missiles and drones, U.S. Central Command said in a statement on Tuesday evening. The facilities are also used by other militant outfits, Central Command added. According to Reuters, Scandinavian airline SAS said on Tuesday it expects its revenue to exceed 48 billion Swedish crowns in 2024. The carrier said it would file an amended Chapter 11 plan of reorganization with the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of New York to include its final and updated projections. According to Bloomberg, China-related stocks are poised for healthy gains on Wednesday buoyed by Beijing's latest market rescue efforts and tracking Wall Street after the SP500 and Nasdaq 100 closed at all-time highs for a second straight day. Futures point to gains of about 2% in Hong Kong stocks and 1% in China's benchmark index, with Australian shares also set to rise. Stocks in Japan may start slightly down. A gauge of U.S.-listed Chinese shares surged almost 5% on Tuesday after Bloomberg News reported Beijing is considering a package of measures to stabilize its falling stock market. According to Bloomberg, New Zealand inflation slowed in the fourth quarter while indicators of domestic price pressures remain stubbornly high. Annual inflation eased to 4.7% from 5.6% in the third quarter, Statistics New Zealand said Wednesday in Wellington. That matched economists' expectations although the Reserve Bank had forecast 5%. Consumer prices advanced 0.5% from three months earlier, in line with estimates. According to Bloomberg, Netflix Inc. signed up 13.1 million customers in the final three months of 2023, the streaming giant's best quarter of growth since viewers were stuck at home in the early days of the pandemic. The strong tally exceeded Wall Street's estimate of 8.91 million and beat projections in every region of the world, with Netflix adding more than 5 million customers in Europe, the Middle East and Africa alone. Sales rose to $8.83 billion, the company said Tuesday, also topping forecasts. According to Bloomberg, BBB Foods Inc., the operator of a discount retailer in Mexico, is looking to go public with a U.S. initial offering that's expected to raise as much as $500 million, according to people familiar with the matter. The company, a holding firm that conducts business through its main subsidiary Tiendas 3B, is seeking a listing that would raise about one-third of its valuation, the people said, asking not to be named discussing confidential information. The transaction could be launched as soon as the first quarter, the people said. According to Yahoo Finance, Netflix said its newly announced WWE deal doesn't change its outlook on avoiding traditional live sports investments, at least for now. WWE Raw is sports entertainment, which is right in the sweet spot of our sports business, which is the drama of sports, Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarandos said on the earnings call following the company's fourth quarter results on Tuesday. According to Reuters, the rapid development of novel artificial intelligence tools will lead to an increase in cyber attacks and lower the barrier of entry for less sophisticated hackers to do digital harm, Britain's GCHQ spy agency warned on Wednesday. That lower entry barrier will also likely contribute to the global rise in ransomware attacks, whereby criminals encrypt computer systems for a digital ransom, the National Cyber Security Center, which is part of GCHQ, said in a report. According to Reuters, 
London remains the world's top financial centre as New York slips into second place, after tying with the UK capital last year, the City of London Corporation's own survey showed on Wednesday. Bottlenecks in business activity caused by Brexit, which largely cut the city off from the European Union, and the COVID-19 pandemic have been cleared, while regulatory efficiency, immigration policies and workers returning to the office have all improved London's business ecosystem, the survey said. According to Bloomberg, China's domestic investors are abandoning the nation's equities for the safety of bonds as concerns mount about the deteriorating economic outlook. Yields on 30-year government securities dropped to the lowest in almost two decades this week, and futures on the notes recorded one of the biggest daily jumps since April 2023. The moves came after the benchmark CSI 300 index of shares plummeted to a five-year low amid signs of a wider exodus from the world's second biggest economy. According to Reuters, a group of investors managing more than $25 trillion said they plan to challenge mining companies that have not yet committed to a tailings dam best practice standard and may vote against management at upcoming annual meetings. The Investor Mining and Tailings Safety Initiative was launched in August 2020 in response to the Brumadinho disaster in Brazil where 270 people were killed when a tailings dam collapsed. According to Bloomberg, Texas Instruments Inc. shares slid after the chipmaker delivered a disappointing quarterly forecast, indicating that a slump in demand for industrial and automotive electronic components is dragging on. Sales in the first quarter will be $3.45 billion to $3.75 billion, the company said in a statement Tuesday. That compares with an average analyst estimate of $4.09 billion, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Profit will be $0.96 cents to $1.16 a share versus a prediction of $1.42. According to Bloomberg, SAP SE unveiled a plan to restructure operations this year to trim costs and focus more on artificial intelligence, affecting about 8,000 employees. The majority of the positions touched by the restructuring will be covered by voluntary leave programs and internal reskilling measures, SAP said Tuesday in a statement, adding that it expects to end the year with headcount virtually unchanged. The German software maker said the changes will be made throughout 2024 to ensure that SAP's skill set and resources continue to meet future business needs. SAP said it had 107,602 full time workers as of December 31. According to Bloomberg, two months of missile, drone, and hijacking attacks against civilian ships in the Red Sea have caused the biggest diversion of international trade in decades pushing up costs for shippers as far away as Asia and North America. The disruption is spreading, fueling fears of broader economic fallout. Repeated rounds of retaliatory strikes by the US and its allies, as well as a multinational naval operation to patrol the waters, haven't stopped the assaults by the Houthi militants that followed the start of the Israel-Hamas war. With sailors demanding double pay and insurance rates skyrocketing, shipping lines are steering clear of a waterway that normally carries 12% of the world's seaborne trade. According to Bloomberg, a jury ordered a Berkshire Hathaway Energy Company unit to pay nine homeowners at least $62 million for failing to prevent some Oregon wildfires in 2020, including $9 million for a man who jumped off a cliff into a river to escape the flames that destroyed his home. Adding to the almost $90 million tab the company faced after an earlier jury found it grossly negligent in June, Tuesday's verdict in Portland State Court capped the first of three mini-trials designed to assess how much the largest grid operator in the western U.S. will ultimately have to pay as many as 5,000 victims of the fires. According to Reuters, eBay Inc. will cut about 1,000 roles, or an estimated 9% of its current workforce, the e-commerce retailer said on Tuesday. While we are making progress against our strategy, our overall headcount and expenses have outpaced the growth of our business, eBay CEO Jamie Iannone said in a letter shared with employees. According to Reuters, the Australian government on Wednesday named long-standing media executive Kim Williams the next chairperson of the country's national broadcaster, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Williams is currently chair of the board of Thomson Reuters Founders Share Company, an independent body tasked with preserving the Reuters news agency's independence. According to Reuters, Japan's exports value surged to their biggest monthly record in December. Official data showed on Wednesday 
propelled by shipments to China rising for the first time in over a year in record sales to the United States. Exports from the world's third largest economy rose 9.8% year on year last month to 9.65 trillion yen, the Ministry of Finance data showed. According to Bloomberg, eBay Inc. will cut about 1,000 jobs, or 9% of its full time employees, and reduce work for its outside contractors, saying its staffing and expenses have outpaced growth. The e commerce company said it needs to be more nimble in the face of a challenging economic environment. According to Reuters, Japan's factory activity shrank for the eighth consecutive month in January amid weak demand, but the service sector saw strong gains as new business picked up, a private business survey showed on Wednesday. The Ojibun Bank Flash Japan Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index was little changed at 48.0 in January from a final 47.9 in December. The headline index has remained below the 50.0 threshold, which separates contraction from expansion, since June. According to Reuters, Santander's Mexico unit will launch its digital bank service in the next few months, an executive said on Tuesday, adding the bank's planned rollout was in the final stages. The banking giant's digital product, known as OpenBank, received its license to operate in the country in July. According to Reuters, a plane registered to Northwestern Air Lease crashed near Fourth Smith in Canada's remote Northwest Territories, the Transportation Safety Board of Canada said on Tuesday, killing some people on board. There were no details on how many people died or how many had been on board but the Premier of the Northwest Territories put out a statement mourning those lost in the crash. According to Reuters, China's ambassador to the European Union called the EU's probe into Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers over state subsidies, unfair, Fu Kong told Bloomberg News in an interview. Kong told Bloomberg that China is cooperating with the EU's probe, because we do want to avoid a situation that the two sides will have to resort to trade measures against each other. According to Reuters, Samsung Electronics is considering leasing its TV factory in Russia, South Korean media reported on Wednesday, after various global companies stopped sales or paused business in Russia since its 2022 invasion of Ukraine. Samsung is considering leasing its TV and monitor factory in Kaluga, Russia, Yonhap News Agency and other media reported on Wednesday. According to Reuters, Israel and Hamas have moved closer to agreement on a 30-day ceasefire in Gaza when Israeli hostages and Palestinians prisoners would be released, sources told Reuters, as Israel pressed ahead with its assault on southern Gaza's main city of Khan Yunus. Qatar, the US and Egypt have held shuttle diplomacy since December 28 seeking to bridge differences between Israel and the Palestinian militant group on a framework for a break in hostilities, which would also allow an increase in humanitarian aid to Gaza. According to Bloomberg, for veteran hedge fund investor Chua Soon-Hak, 2024 was supposed to herald a multi-year rise in Chinese stocks and the opportunity of a lifetime. Instead, his fund's sudden demise sends a warning to fellow China bulls, stick to your guns at your peril. Chua's Asia Genesis Asset Management Private told investors this week the $330 million fund would close after it was badly burned by wrong-way bets on Japan and by falling Chinese markets that he largely blamed on inaction by policymakers, including President Xi Jinping. According to Reuters, the dollar hovered near a six-week high against major peers on Wednesday as investors cemented expectations that the Federal Reserve would be in no rush to cut interest rates in the face of a resilient U.S. economy. The Japanese yen, though, ticked higher as expectations rose for a stimulus exit as soon as March, following hawkish comments from the Bank of Japan on Tuesday. According to Reuters, oil prices were little changed in Asian trading on Wednesday as weak demand and a recovery in supply limited the market's reaction to mounting geopolitical risk. The front-month March contract for Brent crude inched up $0.05 cents to $79.60 a barrel as at 0138 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude ticked up $0.07 cents to $74.44 a barrel. According to Bloomberg, a top Biden administration official said that the U.S. is concerned by actions that Venezuela's government has taken against the opposition and civil society a few months after an agreement aimed at fostering a competitive and fair vote in presidential elections later this year. The administration of President Nicolas Maduro in the new year has escalated pressure against members of the opposition and government critics, 
citing alleged conspiracies and plots against the regime dating to May 2023. An October accord between the government and the opposition won the government some relief from the U.S.'s maximum pressure sanctions. According to Bloomberg, North Korea fired multiple cruise missiles into waters off its west coast, stepping up tensions after leader Kim Jong-un said he plans to boost the country's nuclear strike capabilities. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said it detected multiple cruise missiles fired at about 7 a.m. Wednesday and was coordinating with its ally the U.S. to monitor for further activities by North Korea. It did not provide more details on the launches. According to Reuters, Japan's government bond yields jumped to their highest level in more than a month on Wednesday, after the Bank of Japan Governor Kazuo Ueda said the chance of meeting the country's inflation goal was rising, driving bets for a policy shift. When asked whether an exit from the negative rate policy was nearing at a post-meeting news conference on Tuesday, Ueda said the prospects of seeing the inflation trend hit 2% were gradually heightening. According to Bloomberg, Thai media company JKN Global Group PCL will sell a 50% stake in the owner of the Miss Universe brand for $16 million, a bid to strengthen the beauty pageant's business. JKN Global will sell shares of the pageant owner, JKN Legacy Inc., to Legacy Holding Group USA Inc., the company said in exchange filing Tuesday. Mexican businessman Raul Rocha Cantu owns Legacy Holding and holds the Miss Universe Mexico copyright, according to a separate press statement. According to Reuters, Asian shares rose on Wednesday on optimism that Chinese authorities will offer support for its stock markets, which have plummeted to multi-year lows, while a hawkish tilt from the Bank of Japan lifted the yen. The MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was 0.27% higher. Still, the index is down 5% in January, set for its worst monthly performance since August. According to Bloomberg, Alibaba Group Holding Limited. Shares jumped after the New York Times reported that founder Jack Ma has been buying up shares in the company. Ma and Alibaba chairman Joe Tsai have both been buying up shares in recent months as the stock plunged, the newspaper reported Tuesday, citing unidentified people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, China created 12.44 million new urban jobs last year, meeting its target, but more efforts are needed to prop up employment amid uncertain economic conditions in 2024, the country's human resources ministry told a press conference on Wednesday. China set a goal to create around 12 million urban jobs in 2023. The job creation goal for this year is expected to be unveiled at the opening of the annual parliamentary meeting in March. According to Reuters, embattled Chinese property developer Country Garden is selling properties in Guangzhou, aiming to raise 3.8 billion yuan, according to an asset transaction platform. The properties include a hotel resort, four office towers, a shopping mall as well as five rental apartment buildings, according to listings dated January 19 on Guangzhou Enterprises Mergers and Acquisition Services. According to Reuters, the U.S. military carried out more strikes in Yemen early on Wednesday, destroying two Houthi anti-ship missiles that were aimed at the Red Sea and were preparing to launch, the U.S. military said in a statement. The U.S. strikes, which took place at roughly 2.30 a.m., are the latest against the Iran-backed group over its targeting of Red Sea shipping, and followed a larger round of strikes a day earlier. According to Bloomberg, ByteDance Limited's TikTok joined a spate of layoffs among technology companies by cutting about 60 jobs, mostly in its sales and advertising division. The positions affected were based in Los Angeles, New York, Austin and overseas, a company spokesperson said. The number is less than 1% of the company's roughly 7,000 staff in the U.S. as of March, and is one of the smaller cuts made recently by major tech firms. According to Reuters, youth appeal and ambitious plans to combat climate change form the core of Bilawal Bhutto Zardari's effort to become Prime Minister of Pakistan, which, if successful, would make him its youngest premier since his mother Benazir was in office. As general elections near on February 8, the 35 year old, a former foreign minister and scion of a family that gave the nation two prime ministers, called for new ideas and leadership to calm political and economic instability. According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan, kicking off its first meeting for 2024 this week, 
gave the clearest signal yet that an end to its years-long negative interest rate policy was approaching. In a briefing after keeping ultra-loose policy on Tuesday, Governor Kazuo Ueda said the chance of sustainably hitting the central bank's 2% inflation target was increasing. According to Bloomberg, some of the world's largest asset managers raised their holdings of Adani Group dollar bonds last year after the unprecedented route sparked by Hindenburg Research. BlackRock Inc. held $125 million of dollar bonds at par value, double its position from the end of 2022, while holdings by State Street Corp. surged more than 50% during the period to $16 million, if calculated at par. Lombard Odier's holding rose 20% to nearly $140 million, while Neuberger Berman Group LLCs increased about 42% to just over $40 million, according to data compiled by Bloomberg as of January 23. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average fell on Wednesday as profit-taking continued from the last session, while traders interpreted the tone at the latest Bank of Japan meeting as hawkish. The Nikkei was down 0.68% at 36,268.15 at the midday close, further edging lower from a 34-year peak of 36,984.51 hit on Tuesday. According to Reuters, Hong Kong stocks rose on Wednesday as hopes of Chinese authorities coming to the rescue of a battered market and news of Jack Ma scooping up Alibaba Group shares lifted market sentiment. The Hang Seng Index jumped 2.4% and the Hang Seng Tech Index was up as much as 3.7% in early trade, driven by the gains in benchmark heavyweight Alibaba, before ceding some ground. By midday, the Xi was up only 0.8%. According to Bloomberg, Japanese government bonds dropped as traders judged comments from the central bank on Tuesday to be hawkish and brought forward their bets for an interest rate hike in coming months. The yield on benchmark 10-year notes climbed 10.5 basis points to 0.74%, the highest in more than a month. Governor Kazuo Ueda said the certainty of achieving the Bank of Japan's price projections has continued to gradually increase, after it left monetary policy unchanged and introduced new language in the quarterly outlook report on Tuesday. According to Reuters, Egyptian economic growth will be slower than previously expected as its pound weakens, inflation cuts into purchasing power and fallout from the Gaza crisis eats into the country's main sources of foreign currency, a Reuters poll showed on Wednesday. Revenue from the Suez Canal fell 40% in early January after sea attacks by Yemen's Houthis diverted away shipping. The crisis in neighboring Gaza that started in October has also weakened the tourism outlook. According to Reuters, the nose wheel of a Boeing 757 passenger jet operated by Delta Airlines popped off and rolled away as the plane was lining up for takeoff over the weekend from Atlanta's International Airport, according to the Federal Aviation Administration. Boeing was not immediately available to comment outside regular business hours. According to Reuters, Australia's oldest listed investment firm is finding beaten down lithium shares are starting to look like buys with the sector's downturn reminiscent of the hasty selling in healthcare stocks caused by weight loss drug Ozempic, its top executive said. Founded in 1928, Australian Foundation Investment Company manages 9.3 billion Australian dollars and is a top 20 shareholder in blue chips such as Macquarie Group and BHP Group. According to Reuters, New Caledonian nickel producer Prony Resources is facing an alarming situation amid a slump in metal prices as it waits for the possibility France will offer monetary support for the territory's nickel sector, a company spokesperson said. Prony's struggles highlight the troubles of the French Pacific Island Territory's nickel industry, the fourth biggest producer of nickel ore globally, as prices have plummeted 40% in the past year on surging Indonesian supply. After years of losses, France is trying to work out an agreement by the end of the month to bolster the producers through investments to help reduce costs.